Dear colleagues, welcome to my hospital at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a cataract of moderate density in a highly hypermetropic and amblyopic eye. I have taken up this case for surgery. Let us see what happened and how I managed the case. By this time, the main incision has been placed at a selected site. Viscoelastic substance, 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose has been injected into the anterior chamber. Now, this is a paracentesis on the left side of the main incision. And now, capsulorexis. I incised the capsule with a 26 case band needle. And I find that the antechamber is very shallow. The eye well power selected for this eye is 34 diopter. However, I inject viscoelastic substance and continue capsulorexis with a uterator forceps. But uh, as I go towards 6 o'clock, I find that the antechamber is very shallow and the uterita is almost touching the cornea. So I came out, injected some more viscoelastic substance and now I asked for the knife again and here it is. I'm making a very small paracentesis at around 8.45 o'clock. And now I introduce the needle and continue rexis with the needle. Since this is very small side port, leakage of viscoelastic substance will be very minimal and I can continue rexis very well. But I find that the capsule is not moving as in other normal cases. I have to push a lot and here at around 2 o'clock the rexis has gone to periphery to some extent, but it is still retrievable. So I inject viscoelastic substance, take the uterata again, hold the capsular flap, here it is, hold the capsular flap and complete the Rexis. Yes. And now, hydro dissection. Fluid wave is passed just under the rear capsular rim. And see that the fluid goes to the opposite side. Hydro delineation is also attempted. Nucleus is tapped. And I find that the nucleus is rotating nicely. And now is the time to introduce the FECO handpiece. Inject viscoelastic substance. I go bevel down, be over the lens surface, make turn the FECO handpiece, make the bevel up and go into the substance of the nucleus. I didn't try to aspirate cortical matter in this case because then I have to be over the lens and the teeth itself can cut, touch the cornea. Antichamber is very shallow in this case. So I went directly into the lens mass, chopped the nucleus divided it again into smaller pieces and emulsified this piece. Rotate it again, hold the nucleus here and chop it here. Turn the tip towards the left side and emulsify the free nuclear fragment at 3 o'clock. Yes, the cataract is of moderate density. It is getting chopped easily and I can comfortably emulsify and remove the pieces. Care that I'm taking is I'm in the anterior part of the capsular bag, not in the anterior chamber because the anterior chamber is very shallow. 
Yes, the nucleus has been managed. Now this is epinucleus. Pull the epinuclear mass at the center. Apply very minimal ultrasonic energy and emulsify it and remove it. That's it. The nucleus and epinucleus has been nicely managed. And now Viscoelastic substance is injected again. Now we want to use 23 Gauss Simco for removal of cortical matter. And here it is, removing the cortex. This is a 23 Gauss Simco attached to a 10 cc glass syringe. You can use bimanual but always take care to be at a deeper plane and take care that the antechamber should not be shallow. The bimanual probes should not touch the corneal endothelium. And here I am removing the sub-incisional cortex going through the left side port. The right side port is too small and through the right side port the Simco cannot go into the anterior chamber. Yes, the cortex has been removed and the posterior capsule looks very clean and here goes the foldable intraocular lens. This is a hydrophobic intraocular lens and here the lens goes into the capsular bag. And now I dial the lens with the irrigating probe itself. The lens is moving a lot because the haptics have not yet opened up. The haptics will open up, take shelter at the equatorial part of the capsular bag and then the lens will be stable. Now the side ports are hydrated and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. I find that the I cannot rotate the nucleus clockwise, surprisingly, but I can rotate the nuclear uh, rotate the eye well anticlockwise go behind the lens and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber form the anterior chamber nicely and conclude the case thank you very much for watching hope this video will give you essential tips to manage cataracts with very shallow anterior chamber the colleagues we must improve our surgical skills and give very good service to the mankind